What if I told you there is a database that is 100% free, has a world-class admin UI, and almost everybody in the world knows how to use it? That's impossible. Believe it or not, Google Sheets, the spreadsheet software, can be used as a lightweight database or headless CMS as the data layer in your application stack. And that's exactly what I'll show you how to do today by integrating Google Sheets with Next.js. In the process, you'll learn how to easily fetch data from a Google Sheet in any server-side Node.js application, which also opens the door to connecting hundreds of other Google APIs to your server. If you're new here, like and subscribe, and follow along with the full write-up on Fireship.io. But before you get too excited about this amazing old tech, there are some important caveats when using Google Sheets as your primary database. First of all, it was never designed to be an app database. It's not going to be ACID compliant and doesn't support joins or complex queries. Actual data storage only scales to 5 million cells. And there's also an API quota that limits you to 500 requests per 100 seconds. But even with those limitations, Google Sheets actually actually makes a great little database for prototyping, and there's really nothing stopping you from using it in production. If you're building a Jamstack site, you could use it as a headless CMS, and it's very unlikely that you'll ever hit the API quota or storage limits. But most importantly, it's super easy to use. So let's jump right into things. The first step is to create a Google Sheet and add some data to it. You'll notice I have two columns here, one for the title and one with content in the form of HTML. Now to fetch or query data from the sheet, all you have to do is highlight it. And you'll notice when you do that, that it creates a range of cells up here in the top left corner. That'll come into play later when we start making requests through the API. Now, in order to make the sheet available to the app, we need to share it publicly. When you click the share button, it generates a URL and inside that URL, you'll notice an ID, which is the ID of the sheet itself. You'll want to make a note of that ID for later. The next step is to generate our Next.js application. And keep in mind, you can follow the same basic process for any Node.js server. We can run npx create next app from the command line and then open it up in VS Code. Whenever working with a Google API on the server, you'll want to install the REST client for your preferred language, which in our case is Node.js. Run npm install Google APIs, and we can use this package to simplify the authentication process and give us IntelliSense and VS Code. Now, what we actually want to build in Next is a blog that will give us a list of post titles, then clicking on a title will take us to the post page and render out the HTML in the Google Sheet. That means we need two different components in Next, which will live in the pages slash post directory. The first one is the index page, and the second one takes a dynamic ID parameter, which corresponds to an actual row in the spreadsheet. For now, we'll just go ahead and leave these files empty, because before we can do anything, we need to authenticate the Google API to our project. Authenticating a Google API in a project is a very complicated topic, which you'll find out if you try to read the official documentation, but it doesn't really have to be. There are multiple ways to authenticate, but the two you should know about are application default credentials and OAuth2. In this demo, we'll be using default credentials, which is just like using an API key. The limitation, though, is that you only have access to resources on your own Google account. That works fine for us, but many apps using Google APIs want access to resources owned by other users. Like, for example, if our app wanted to access files in somebody else's Google Drive. For apps like that, the other user needs to first give us permission, and the only way to do that is with OAuth2 authentication. That's beyond the scope of this video, but it's important to make the distinction, and if you want to learn more, I have a pro video on Fireship.io dedicated to it. Now that we decided we're using default authentication, we can head over to the Google Cloud Platform console to enable the API. Now the Sheets API is 100% free, but you may need to have a credit card on file when creating a new Google Cloud account. Once you have a Google Cloud account and project set up, you can go to APIs and Services, then click the button to enable APIs and Services. Type Sheets into the search bar, then click the Enable button. That'll take a second to enable, then click Manage. From there, you'll see a tab for Credentials. Go ahead and click on that, and find your App Engine default service account. Go ahead and click on that, and then you'll find one more tab for keys. From there, you can generate a key, which is just a JSON file that includes your credentials and can authorize another server to access APIs and other resources that you own on Google Cloud. I'm downloading that file to the root of my Next.js project as secrets.json, but it's very important that you don't expose this file publicly. If someone gets a hold of it, they'll have access to your Google Cloud account. So make sure to add it to your git ignore file before committing this to a public repo. Now that our credentials are in place, we need to make them available to our server-side code. And the way we can do that is with an environment variable. Variable. The Next.js framework will automatically find any environment variables that you define in the .env.local file. Create that file, then inside of it, add the Google application credentials environment variable and point it to the service account JSON. It's important that that variable has that exact name. 
In addition, I'm also adding a sheet ID environment variable, which is the sheet that I got from the URL and the Google sheet earlier. And now we're finally ready to write some JavaScript code. We'll first go into the post ID.js file and import Google from the Google API's package. Now, the next thing I'll do is set up our server side code by exporting an async function called git server side props. If you're not familiar with Next.js, I do have a video about that, but basically, this function will only run on the server, and its purpose is to fetch data or props that we can then use in the front end React component. So, first, we'll fetch the title and content for a given row on the server, then take that data and render it out. In the browser or client as HTML. To access Google Sheets on the server, we need to authenticate the API client. That can be done by awaiting Google Auth Git Client and selecting the scope that you want access to, which in this case is the spreadsheets read-only scope. That's going to look for that Google Applications environment variable that we defined earlier to authenticate us. We can then use the returned object to access the Google Sheets API by passing it as the auth param. And now we're ready to make our first query to the spreadsheet or database, I mean. We want to fetch an individual row number, which we'll get from the URL as the ID parameter. Then to make the request, we need to specify a range of columns and cells. The Google Sheets query language will first have you specify a sheet or table, followed by an exclamation point, then the range of cells that you want to access. For example, if we want row 23, we can say column A23 through column C23. But in this case, we don't want to hard code it. We want to use the dynamic ID that gets passed in through the URL. Now we can make an actual request to the API by awaiting the sheets spreadsheet values get method. That method will take our range along with the spreadsheet ID, which if you remember earlier, we set up as an environment variable. That'll give us a response that contains the data we want for the UI. The data is formatted in an array, and I'm using destructuring here to give the values a name of title and content. Now at this point, we can run the next app by running npm run dev, and if we pull it up in the browser and go to the URL of post slash three, it should give us row three in the spreadsheet. And that's what I would call some next level sheet. 